everyone. Welcome back to Making Art with Mrs. Gordon. We are going to be making an optical art project today. Optical art refers to art that gives the illusion of movement. So, so there is already a video regarding optical art on my page, but this is a very different uh, type of optical art. And this is the one we'll be creating today. So if you want to go back after creating this assignment, you can always go back and look at that other video and create that one. But the optical art that you'll be creating today is from this particular video. And you'll see how different it looks from the one from the other video if you happen to see it. So just to quickly show you, this is our optical art that we'll be creating today. And again, it's the whole idea of movement. It gives the illusion of not only moving, but even makes things look three dimensional when they're really not. So if you notice, we have these three spheres, which is just a three dimensional circle, three spheres on our paper. And these spheres, um, they get the feeling of being three dimensional because of the line work that's inside of them. All the lines are curved in the same direction as the circle itself. So it really makes it look very round. Then in the background, you have these lines that are all starting from the edge of the paper and working their way to the center of the paper, which creates this idea of distance. It makes it seem like the lines on the outside are much closer to us and the lines on the inside near the middle of the paper are much further away. So you really get this idea of distance and then these spheres are close to us. So it really creates this really cool, unique um, perspective of uh, things close up, which is foreground, and things far away, which is background, without actually creating them in that space. It's a flat paper. They're all in the same space, but this optical art really makes it seem like there's multiple spaces happening, happening in the image. And this is what you'll be creating. So it's really simple. Um, but there, there are a few things you'll need for this project. So you want to make sure you get all your supplies first before you even sit down to start working. So the first thing you'll need, obviously, is a sheet of paper. You can use a regular white sheet of paper or you can use, use a sheet of notebook paper. Just like I mentioned in the other video, a sheet of notebook paper is more than sufficient. You do not need to go out and get art paper or computer paper. You can just use notebook paper. You'll also need a pencil. Now that is something that you cannot substitute. You will need to start in a pencil because there's a very good chance you may make a mistake and you'll have to erase. I myself make mistakes, so you really wanna start in a pencil first and not with anything else. You'll need some type of coloring utensil. You'll need crayons, colored pencils, or markers. Or if you feel the need or you can, you can paint. Might be a little harder, but um, you could totally do it. I'm using color pencils today. And if you don't have any color pencils or crayons or markers, you are free to use your pencil, but you do have to shade. I had some scholars ask if they can go without coloring. You cannot, you will need to color this image to make everything really stand out. You can color it just with a pencil and do black, white, and gray and keep it very simple, but you will need to color it. So next thing you'll need is a little different. You'll need to look around your house and see what you have. So you'll need to find things that have a circular top or circular bottom. For your spheres, I used three. You can use, you can draw four spheres, you can draw five, however many you want. The minimum is three, so you do need to have at least three. And you need to find things in your house that you can use to trace to create those spheres because drawing a circle freehand is very difficult. And if it's not perfect, it can really change the illusion and lose the whole idea of that 3D look that each sphere has. So for me, I went around my house, I found a measuring cup. So I'm gonna use this measuring cup because it has a circular top and a circular bottom. I'm gonna be using the top for my largest sphere. I'm using this top to a bottle um, for my daughter's um, hair bottle. Uh, I'm using this top for my smallest sphere. 
And then my medium size sphere, I'm using this glass. And I'm gonna, I can use the top or the bottom because this circle is the same size on both. So you really wanna find at least three. You can do more than three, but you have to have at least three and you want them to be different sizes. It doesn't make sense to find um, things that are all the same size because then you wouldn't need three. So try to find different sizes. Look in your cabinet for cups. Measuring cups work really well. Look at bottles. See about tops of bottles. That really works. Bottle caps, things like that. Um, there's tons of options. So really look around and see what you have. I'm going to put this to the side for now. So your first, the first thing you want to do is trace those three circles on your paper to create your spheres. So that's what we're going to do first. So with your pencil, you want to decide where your spheres go. My first one's going to go at the top of my paper. So I'm going to put this measuring cup face down. I'm going to hold it with one hand and trace it at the bottom. Make sure your pencil's pressed up against it. So this way it stays circular and it doesn't move on you. Then this I'm going to use for my smallest sphere. I'm going to put it on this side. And there is a small, I don't know if you see that small lip. So I will have to skip that area and draw it in freehand because I don't want that on my circle because then it will no longer be a perfect circle. I'm going to put it a little further down. And again, just hold it, go around. And then I'll just complete the circle myself. And then last, the glass. Actually, let me turn it this way and make it a little easier for me. All right, I have my three circles and then they will be spheres very shortly. Uh, to make them spheres, we have to use curved lines and the curved lines have to mimic the shape of the circle. If they don't, if you draw straight lines, you won't have spheres. You'll have flat circles with lines in them. So you really, really need to make sure all your lines curve in the same direction as the circle. So if the circle curves to the right, your line curves to the right. If your circle curves up, your line curves up. Whichever way the circle's going, your lines have to go in the same direction. So I'm gonna show you slowly on this one and then I'll draw in the rest. So first step, start at the top of the circle, right in the middle. And I'm actually gonna do my first line to the left. I'm gonna curve it to the left because my circle curves to the left. And I'm gonna stop right at the bottom. And then on the opposite side, I'm gonna curve to the right and meet. I wanna meet the bottom of the other line I drew. Start at the top of that line, curve right, and go down. Then back up to the top, move over just a bit, curve left again, and I'm gonna curve left one more time because I have a little bit more space. Then on the right, do the same thing, curve right, then curve right again. Okay, now I'm almost done. The next step is to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm gonna curve up and curve down. If you're not good at curving up or down, just turn your paper and you can do left and right again. And it's the same thing. So starting in the middle, curving up, and then middle again, curving down. Then just mimicking that. Then I have my sphere, and I'm gonna repeat that on the others.
once you're done with all your spheres, the next step is to draw your straight lines. So another supply you will definitely need is a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, a folder, or anything with a straight edge really, really works. So again, a ruler is great, but if you do, if you lack a ruler, anything with a straight edge. So just like this folder here has a straight edge, you can definitely just use that and create your lines. You do not have to have a ruler, but if you have a ruler, it may be a little bit easier. So with your ruler or folder, whatever you may be using, you'll first identify where the center is. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. If it's a little high or a little low, it's okay. Just decide where you think center may be. Put a small dot. It doesn't have to be super dark, but just dark enough for you to be able to see it. And so you won't lose it. And from that line, you're going to draw lines coming out of the center and work your way around your paper. You can space these lines out as much, much as you want. So if you notice from my final, they're pretty close. And I'm actually not going to make them this close just to show you can really space them out. So they could be super close. They can be even closer than this. Or you can really spread them out. So for this one, I'm, I am going to spread it out just a bit more just so you can see what that looks like. So you wanna first, it doesn't matter where you start, just make sure your ruler is laying on top of that dot that you put in the center of your paper. Make sure your ruler's going to the edge of your paper. You wanna draw the line, all right? And again, I'm, I'm gonna have to turn my paper a few times, which you'll probably have to do too. And you wanna put these lines as close together as you want or as far apart as you want. There is no correct way to do it. But the closer, of course, you make it, the longer it will take, and that's okay. So it's up to you. And as you go through, do not draw on top of your spheres. Make sure you pick your pencil up as you draw. So I'm going to show you again. I'm just going to draw. I'm going to continue and I'm going to show you how to pick up your pencil. Bear with me for one sec. Let me get to the next sphere. So when I get to the next sphere, you see it here. I'm going to draw my line. When I get to the sphere, I'm going to stop drawing, pick up my pencil and start again on the opposite side, right? So I'm gonna do it one more time so you can see it. Start my line. When I get to the sphere, stop, pick up the pencil, and then begin drawing on the opposite side, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up really quickly. So once you're done, you should have this almost like a starburst going around your paper. And again, just comparison, this one, my lines are a little bit further apart. This one, they're a lot closer together. So it just depends on the amount of work you want to do. There is no wrong way. You can make them really close or you can make them far, far apart. You can make them even further than this. But don't make them so far apart that you want to get like three or four lines. But you want to have a few so you have some uh, variation in your colors. So for your coloring, there is no correct way to color this. For mine, I did uh, complementary colors, which are colors that are that are on the opposite end of the spectrum. 
and it just means that they work really well together. They complement. That's why it's called comp complementary. They complement one another. So, for example, red and green complement each other because on the color wheel, if you see red, on the very opposite side of that color wheel, you'll see green. All right? Um, and you'll see these colors like in holidays, like Christmas. Um, yellow and purple are complementary colors. So you'll see that in sometimes in different sports or uniforms like Lakers or things like that because uh, they complement each other. They're good for the eye. They, cre they put them together. And then orange and blue can be seen in other things, other teams and different things um, as well, like Bears or um, our Chicago Bears or things like that. You don't have to do complementary colors. That's just what I chose. You can do um, any color. You can maybe do blue and green. You can do pink and white, pink and black, blue and purple, just whatever you want. But decide what color pattern you want. They can all be different or they can all be the same. It's up to you. I'm going to start um, coloring some of these in on my new paper and coloring in some of the background just to give you show you how to do it and then I'll go ahead and jump to the final. So just go ahead and watch for the next few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and color in some of these spheres and some of the background. this much just to kind of give you an idea but if you notice I went ahead and colored one of my spheres and I started about half almost half of the background for yours you do not need to necessarily do these colors you can do any kind of pattern you'd like um, I just decided to do a rainbow pattern in the background and I just constantly repeat so I use these colors um, these seven colors and then I just repeated them until I made my way back around for my uh, for the one I showed you earlier and then 
Um, for my spheres, of course, I told you I did complimentary colors. So for you, you can choose any colors you would like. And for your background, you don't have to use seven, eight colors. You can use two colors and just repeat. You know, you could do in the background, maybe white and black. Keep your spheres all colorful. And then in the background, do white, black, white, black all the way around. It's truly, truly up to you. If you don't have any colors, again, you still have to color this. Um, so you can use your pencil to just shade. Maybe all of your spheres can be a light gray and white. So maybe gray, white, gray, white for all of your spheres. And maybe your background, you uh, do black, white, black, white, or like a very dark gray color as dark as you can with your pencil to get some variation between the background and the spheres but you do have to color so whether you have color pencils or if you have a pencil you do have to color and keep in mind again for your background you don't have to do these many lines especially if you are lacking colors um this will be a lot to do with just one pencil so please if you are lacking uh colors or if you don't want to do this many you do not have to you can just do a few lines like I did, like I started earlier, and it will go a lot faster, but have the same beautiful effect, okay? So again, spheres, you will need to find circular objects in your house to create those. Curve your lines the same direction as the sphere is going, and in your background, use a ruler or anything with a straight edge like a folder a book anything will do with that said i can't wait to see your work and thank you so much for making art with mrs gordon